between the Fullerton School District and the parents of student ID 733780. The district agrees to reimburse the parents an amount not to exceed $5,432 and one cent in satisfaction of all reasonable attorney fees and costs in case number SACB 11 1597 JBS. I'm presentation of documentation as identified in paragraph 3 and 4. Payable to quote the client trust account of student ID number 7380 and association APLC within six and quote within 60 days after execution by parents and their counsel of this agreement. Thank you. I want to remind the audience that this meeting is being videotaped and you should be aware of that. From there, I would like to ask that um, our Girl Scout Cadet Troop 21 from Robert C. Kistler School please lead us in the pledge to the flag.
that there is a direct correlation between good health and academic achievement. Our Strong Minds, Strong Bodies, Strong Futures program consists of an exceptional PE program, teachers and staff that emphasize eating healthy and being active, and a wonderful partnership with the St. Jude Neighborhood Health Clinic, which has really brought to play the Healthy Families component. Richmond School has been the finalist in the Governor's Fitness Challenge over the last two years. Our PE teacher received a silver, uh, silver medal in the spotlight category and our school won $2,500 to purchase PE equipment. Last year, we received this wait a minute, wait a minute. $2,500. That was two years ago. Last year we received this beautiful banner to hang on our fence. This spring, we also received a special recognition from, from the American Cancer Society at the California PTA Conference in Long Beach for our wellness program. And this is what one of our healthy students is doing. And last month, Richmond School was awarded, as Dr. Hubby mentioned, the Golden Bell at the California School Boards Association for our Strong Minds, Strong Bodies, Strong Futures program. by the results that we've been seeing and would like to extend a very heartfelt thank you to our school board, superintendent, and to the Fullerton School District for the continued leadership and support that you all provide. At this time, I would like one of our very healthy students, Diego Flores, <laughs> to come forward and Diego will now lead everyone in our strong minds, strong bodies, strong futures, Cheer. So I will hold this while you turn around, Diego, and I'm going to ask that everyone stand up at this moment. Please stand <laughs> and join the gun. It's humorous. Let's have you stand up with your gun. Okay, and turn around so that people, everyone can see you everywhere. <coughs> Ready? What can we do this? Okay. Sorry. Let me have you do this. Okay, so he will say something, then everyone will echo what he's saying, and also do the motion he's doing. Okay? Strong mind. Strong minds, strong bodies, strong bodies, strong features, strong features. One more time. Strong minds, strong bodies, strong features, strong features. Thank you so much. And finally, those that are part of our Richmond family and community. I'd like you to please stand. We have several of our families and our staff members and our community partners, St. Jude, that are here. Please stand up and be recognized. Let's give them all a round of applause. some recognition to Richmond School for these awards and tell you how much we share your pride. So thank you for coming this evening and you don't have to rush away. We share your pride and we hope that this good program continues for a long, long time and becomes a lifestyle for not only you, the students at Richmond, but for your families and for our greater community. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> and next, 
next, we'd like to hear from Fisler School that this is their their time to shine and report. Good evening, board members, cabinet, and Dr. Hovey. Thank you for inviting Fisler to, to speak about our school tonight. We're very excited. I'd like to start by thanking our Girl Scout Troop 31. to have all of our staff members and parents please stand up for being here to support the school. I'd like to start with two students who will be speaking tonight, Benjamin Pham and Shirley Pham. We'll start with Shirley. by having only one family. <laughs> uh, it's uh, their mom's birthday tonight, so if they rush off, this lady, uh, the parents are going to, I think they're going to celebrate their mom's birthday, so thank you. Um, I'd like to have our vice principal, Debbie Rosengarten, to come forward, and she'd like to share some of our student projects with you. Thank you, and good evening. At Fisler, our students often use technology to demonstrate their 
mastery of the state standards. Collaboration, communication, and creativity are key elements to their success. And now I have the wonderful opportunity to share with you just a few little snippets, because I've only been given two minutes, <laughs> um, to show you what goes on at Fissler on a daily basis. And I can guarantee I'm going to leave you wanting to see more.
have a tonight with us Thomas Flores, who is our audit partner from Nigro and Nigro. Is it theoretically that the only time they need to review this? 
Yeah. Just here at the table right now. Um, I will give you the report. Okay. I, I mean, and I apologize because I thought you all had. I thought we had given you that. Oh, yeah. So I know last year we got it. That's my fault. I totally apologize. Oh. I thought you had. So yeah, no, you're going to get it. And so once you have a chance to look at it, if you have more questions, right. I can answer more comments. Thank you. I was getting the impression we were like, it's a little bit more to go away. No, 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 no. We need to return them, didn't we? No, no, you can oh, keep it. We'll put it on the website, too. It'll have to be on the website. There we go. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, supplementary information section is page 53 through 62. And um, <coughs> on page 53, I'll show the budgetary comparison schedule. So it'll show, um, and it's required for any um, general fund, any special revenue funds. So uh, the first one on page 53, you'll see um, for the general fund, you'll see the original adopted budget, the final budget, the um, audited financials, and any variance between the final and the audited numbers. On page 59, you'll see the trend schedule. So it'll show um, the budget year, and then it'll show two years back. So you can see um, uh, revenues, expenditures, a new fund balance um, two years back when you were you compare them nice and easy. I just want to point out it shows an 11.5 percent reserve, which is a reflection of the federal jobs money that we're using this year to meet expenses. On page 61, there's um, many uh, audit adjustments right here, so. Um, one of the adjustments was for GASB 54, um, funds um, 11, 14, 17, and 20, should you use them. Those all get rolled up into the general funds, so that's why you see the adjustment there. Um, on pages 63 through 68, other auditors report that indicates that we conducted the audit in accordance with governmental accounting standards. That's the first letter, the second letter is that we um, conducted our audit in accordance with OMB Circular A133, so that's federal compliance. And the third one, that we conducted our audit in accordance with the K-12 audit guide, so that's for state compliance. The last section, which is the section most people look at first, the findings and questions cost. So on page 69, we'll show a summary of um, the financial statements, federal compliance, and state compliance. Um, the school district didn't have any uh, findings and they, um, they corrected last year's findings. There was, um, on page 74 and 75, there's a management letter. And those are um, areas that we we feel they did um, meet the threshold to be reported as a finding, but they are areas of concern to look, to look into. Could you mention what they are? Sure. <laughs> no. One of them was uh, cash receiving the timeliness of the deposit. So from the time that the district collected the deposit to the time it hit the bank, um, we'd like it to be within one week. Because the longer that the cash stays out of the bank, the more likely that it doesn't get deposited intact. And then the other item was for the ASB funds. Uh, every year. <laughs> so if I could just jump in on that too. That is um, the ASB those comments are just in a separate management letter. They're not in the big audit concern. that gets you know, sent up to the, the feds and everything. So there was no problems with any of our other controls or in any of our programs, which is what they really have to report on. And then I'd just like to thank the business department, Steve Miller and uh, Becky Silva, excuse me, for, um, for all their help and helping us and their own duties at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to extend our thanks to her firm and to them. And we will be getting the book Thursday, so let's use this as our index. And I'm sure if there are questions, we'll bring them up to you. If there's something to discuss this further at the table, we'll do that. And when do we need to accept the audit? You need to accept it tonight. Because okay. it's, it's, it's done, it's not going to change. The audit is what it is. Yeah. So you're accepting the fact that the audit was completed. That's you get really a copy of it, and yeah. if you've got questions, you can call them. So do I have a motion to accept the audit? So moved. A second? Second. Thank you, Deb. Um, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. I'm sorry, I did have one question. I, 
things too, like in looking at this and just looking at the two items that have come up, mm -hmm. it seems like these are the same two items that probably come up in lots of school districts mm -hmm. and have come up in our own school district every year that I've been on board. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's getting better because that there's not as many paragraphs as there's been in the past. <laughs> you know, because there's been more than one ASB before. I mean, it just seems like we're making progress in the right direction. Do we ever anticipate that this, I mean, deposits being held, that's pretty simple to, to do, but unless there's questions on what are you We are definitely um, taking care of those already, and yes, our goal is to have absolutely no comments. By the districts, I've had no comments, no audit adjustments, and that is my oh, absolute so goal. And some school districts do achieve that, but then other school districts have page, as an auditor, page after page after page, so yeah. Just from my personal experience. Well, because you've done this before, before right? This oh, is yeah. Really I should do this for like a few years. Well, thank you. And uh, thank the board for moving the side of my so that you can. I have a, just a yes, general okay. question not about the district, just about audits. Um, we, start, we follow state guidelines and you know, certain, certain governmental guidelines about how to do this. Are the governmental good luck guidelines? Guidelines to use, or, or are they inadequate, or um, do you, do you typically do more than what those guidelines indicate? Or are they well written? Well, these auditors have to follow um, governmental auditing principles sure. which is the, for the whole country, okay. and then the state controller of the state of California gives them specific compliance requirements for different programs. Like attendance is a huge one. Right. Since our funding is all based on another different specific. <coughs> programs as they go along. So um, because of those state compliance requirements, it does make it more complex. Uh, there's more to do than, say, if you were just auditing like a not-for-profit or right. a city or something. That would be my answer, Thomas, but I should probably should let you answer. No, that's <laughs> that, that answer. Yeah. It's, it's almost overkill, if anything. It, it is a big audit. They spend a lot of time on it. Who would pay for this? Um, gosh. Do you know what we pay for this? Um, I don't think I'll have to fly out for you. Did you do it? Did, I do did you personally? Did you personally? Yes, I was. I was the in charge. How many people did you? Um, we come out a couple of times. We come out in the spring and in the fall, and it takes about four people plus a partner. That's four people a week. For one week, yes. So about two partner. weeks, four people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's five people. Right. Plus the time in the office. I'd be surprised if it was. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also have to go to the school site, so I sent a couple people out there to reduce the time out there. He would try to get my office by <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Next, we're going to move back to public comments. And I want to remind people that public comments at this time are for items that are not on our agenda. And remember that they are being filmed. I have one slip for public comment right now, and that is Robert Ernest? Everest. 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 And he wants to speak about our academic calendar for the future years, I would say. Well, I heard a rumor that the calendar might get pushed back um, two weeks, and <clears throat> I don't know how everyone is going to react to that. I know personally, <clears throat> I teach. Uh, summer school through the first week of August, so it will greatly impact uh, um, my time with my family during vacation in summer. And my wife's from Liverpool, so we go to England um, regularly, usually in the summer. And if we started in the middle of August, it would definitely um, shorten up our trip. And with the cost of flights, um, we like to stay as long as we can. We have three hours when we get there. So I realize there's uh, some issues with regards to apparently trying to catch up with the East Coast and ACT or something like that, and the high schools were pushing to start earlier so that their kids here are prepared to do the tests earlier. And if and that's a big wall to fight against. Um, obviously, <clears throat> this community comes first, and I reckon there's going to be other people in the community who aren't going to want to start in the middle of August. So, um, pretty short comment, that's basically it. Um, um, maybe if there was a compromise, that would at least, from my perspective, give me an extra week in summer. And I know I'm only one voice, but uh, I've already spoken to that. 
other people in my um, neighborhood, and they're not they're not keen on the idea of us going back so early in August either. So it just it's kind of a bummer to me that we're making the move because of what they do back east. I wish it wasn't that. If that's the reason for doing that move. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. I want to let you know that we do have a committee looking at this, and it's already been meeting, and we will have Dr. Hubby present your thoughts to that committee. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. I'm, I'm, Mr. I'm in charge of the committee, and uh, I, we, is this phone number attached? Yes, it yes. is. I'll come back and give you some additional information, because some of what you have is not totally accurate, right. and we hope it would have more accurate Okay. Yeah, the, 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 the committee's probably a public committee anybody can attend. Not not vote, just well, we, we're all but finished, but I wanted to know where we are and what's going on with it so we have no center. Right. Right. Well if the high school moves because they're going back east, then it makes sense to move the elementary school because families are gonna have people with kids in both, you know, yeah, high school and, and elementary. So I understand that I'm just one voice and it may be a bigger tie that I'm fighting here. You're not one voice for yeah. any, but I'll, again, I'll call you and give you some information. Okay, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would you pass that over to Mr. Douglas? We're now going to go to information from the superintendent. Report. How's many people? <laughs> That's what I'm getting used to it. Uh, I, I wanted just to share this still. First of all, Happy New Year 2012. It is uh, amazing that we're at more than or halfway through the school year and already even into a new calendar year. A lot of good things going on, as was shown earlier at Fistler School and uh, Richmond School. I'd like to say uh, that we also have some other congratulations. I, I also wanted to thank Ted Light. Ted, uh, you came in just a little bit after I came in. I wanted to thank you for the work that you've done in helping us to move forward. Uh, you're, you're going to be hard to replace, but we're happy for you, and we wish you well. Thank you. I wanted to also share with the board that uh, Helen Felix, who is a language arts teacher at Naples Junior High School, uh, was nominated and selected as one of six finalists for the California League of Middle School Freedom of Educator of the Year Award. Awards dinner will be held on the 19th at the Long Beach Yacht Club. Uh, she'll be going, I guess, with her family and principal Matthew Barnett. I don't know if he's here, and I'll be joining them as well. So, congratulations to Helen. It seems that we continue to have many good things happen. We have a great uh, field of teachers in the Fordham School District, and this is just one uh, great representative for her. Can you recognize her at a meeting after that at all, even if she doesn't? Certainly. Be nice to I also wanted to say, uh, just as, a, uh, as we begin to look forward, we have three schools that are <coughs> going to be have a validation visit for California Distinguished School. Those visits will be in March. Uh, Acacia, the winner, Road, and Fistler will be having those visits, so we're proud of those schools and proud of all of our schools. But this is, this is sort of uh, a very special thing. Each year we have different schools that are recognized. So I wanted to recognize in case you live in I know that they'll do well, and we're looking forward to celebrating with them uh, after the visit. Just a, a clarification. The visits come to valid validate what people say they're doing at their schools. Right. And so the reason we feel pretty confident that our schools will receive this recognition is our schools actually tell exactly what they're doing, and we're proud of that. Absolutely. And, and in fact, they don't even get to apply unless they're invited to apply. The process has really changed over the years. So you're right. And once they get a, a visit, then it's all about validating what they're doing. And as long as they have a made up all the paperwork and they can validate it, they can it. <laughs> I have no doubt that they'll be able to validate that with fine colors. Also, I wanted to thank uh, Chris, Board Member Chris Thompson for arranging the visit of Peter Murrieta, executive TV producer of Wizards of Waverly Place. Uh, from the Disney Channel and Double Up the Cartoon Network. My understanding, Chris, is that the visits were very successful. They went to Ladera Vista, spoke to about 400 to 450 students, 
and it spoke to the leadership team at Nick Christian High School. So thank you for helping us set that up. I saw lots of emails going back and forth over the last few months, but we appreciate you getting that set up. And I know the kids appreciate appreciated the, the visit. It was, uh, it was very generous of Pete to basically cut half his day off to do that for us coming through my way. So yeah. I think it was pretty inspirational for kids. Yeah. Thank you for setting that up. I know that when we get members of our community or people that, that are successful like that, it's inspiration to our kids. So thank you for setting that up. So with that being said, uh, I think I've had all my thoughts for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to start with Jenny Meyer to uh, have her report. Well, I'm not going to say ditto on this one because um, it, it warrants the time and effort. But I want to congratulate Ted Lai and thank you for all of your dedication to our technology at Fullerton. Um, and good luck as you move on. And I don't know if you all know Ted's motto, but he may be leaving, but we're going to keep his motto going. And it's, if we teach today as we taught yesterday, we rob our children of tomorrow. And that's, a, that's something that we'll keep with us, Ted, okay? Thank you. Uh, I have the opportunity Friday the 6th of January to sit in on the Nicholas 11th Annual Girls Conference at Hope International. Uh, it was a great program, very motivational for everyone, and I'm sure that the morning had a lifelong impact on many of the girls that attended. Uh, the, the gentleman's name is Jeremy Bates, and I guess he's been coming for quite a while, and <coughs> what an inspirational speaker he was. They had the boys one day, and then they had the girls the next day. I was uh, there for the girls. A reminder that the junior high principals, the Fullerton Technology Foundation grants will be due soon. I think they'll do Friday. Uh, and um, some great ideas out there. We'll be working all weekend on looking at those, and then Monday we will wrap it up. And I just want to make a statement to clarify something that was in the newspaper. Uh, it was reported, the Fullerton Technology will be supporting a variety of technology throughout the school district, close to $70,000 will go directly to schools that apply for teacher grants and a multitude of technology. And um, maybe up to 5000 for the junior high schools. Uh, the check, the $75,000 check, in addition to the $70,000, pre was presented to the district. It supports programs such as discovery education throughout all the schools and the laptop program, 50-50 program, and the offset debt service. Um, it was reported that 85% of the money FTF raises goes to the laptop program, which is not actually accurate. Um, of the $150,000 that we give, uh, only 70 really goes to support the laptop program. So I just wanted to clarify that because I think it's important to know that the Technology Foundation supports all school with all kinds of technology, not just laptops. And then uh, a plug for the Fullerton Foundation, <laughs> Fullerton <laughs> Foundation <laughs> Foundation, all these boards that I'm on, you're all invited to a fundraiser that's coming up, and it's a Chinese New Year at China Village. I have a bunch of flyers up here, so if some of you haven't had a chance to sign up to go, uh, this is there. And it's Sunday, January 29th, 5 o'clock, and it's at China Village, $40 a person or $70 a couple. And uh, so far, we have quite a few of you that are attending. Uh, Hilda Flores is going to be there. Janet's going to be there. Beth's going to be there. Bob's going to be there. Um, Sue Fossens, the Montoyas are going to be there. Um, I don't know. There may be a few people that reservations came in this morning, but that's what I have so far from the people who would be in this room right now. Um, it looks like a nice night. They have great food. And they're turning the entire restaurant over to us for the whole night. And that will benefit teacher grants for Fullerton and classrooms. Thank you. Mr. Thompson? Yeah, I'll be brief. Um, I was going to mention uh, the Peter Marietta County, but, but we've already done that. Because there's um, principals in the room, and, and Carla is the president of uh, the Teachers Association, um, I want to be very careful about uh, the comments I'm going to make because I don't want comments to be political. I just want comments to be factually based. And the, the reason I'm bringing this up is because a, in, in a mailer, in a political mailer having nothing to do with the school district that went out, the, the person, uh, the, the, the mailer referred to the fact that I'm a school board member. And, and so I want to clarify the facts. And also another board member called me and said several PTA people had called her 
about this. This is why I decided to bring it up. Um, why don't you guys know that a mail went out, and, and uh, I'm involved in a political campaign, which many of you may know about, and this political campaign involves signature gathering activities, to, which to a great extent I manage. And this mailer um, showed myself and another person who was chairman of a political PAC that, that is financing this political campaign. And, and it, it implied through the picture of a pair of handcuffs and the word arrested and the word busted um, and its direct copy that uh, myself and this other person, and I'm only interested in myself here, had been arrested. And, and it kind of gave me the impression that I'd been arrested, put in handcuffs, and I'm sure to vote the image that I'd been carted away. So in this campaign, um, it is true that store managers a couple of times asked the police to assist in citizen's arrest, the arrests. And it's incumbent upon police in the state of California to assist any citizen in a citizen's arrest when requested. What that consisted of was names and addresses being taken a report being written of the assertion by the store managers, a document being handed over that said released at the top, and the assertions being sent to the district attorney's office. Um, and in every case, including I believe the two cases I was involved, the district attorney responded to the, the current interim chief of police, Dan Hughes, within 24 hours, indicating that the no charges were under consideration because no law had been broken. So um, I don't know if anybody's been asked, if you have a teacher asked, if you have if you have a parent asked, and if you care to respond, it's certainly not incumbent upon you. I wanted you to know I have not been arrested, and it is important to me that uh, I would take care as a citizen, as a school board member, to not get myself arrested for any political activity. So I just wanted to clear that up. It was a little longer than I wanted.
So let's make 2012 another fantastic year. <coughs> Each year just gets better, and I know 2012 will be great too. So I hope everyone had a great holiday, and welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have a few comments also. First of all, I got some thank you notes and some holiday cards, and some of them were like this. They were from all the arts for all the kids. The cards were purchased, and that doubly thrilled me. One, the notes inside, and two, to see different people using our foundations in a win, 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 win way for all of us. So I just want to remind you that the, the all the Arts Foundation offers these online, in person, in Marlin's office, you can find me, everywhere. So that was one thing. This board goes each year to uh, California School Board Association conference. Like all of you, conferences are insightful and exciting and visionary for all of us. We had one speaker to of whom I'd like to reference. And his, he does something called the Khan Academy. Have any of you heard of the Khan Academy? Nobody? Oh, a few of you. Great. This is a gentleman who uh, promotes the teaching of math in a very student-friendly way. And by students, I mean little guys to people probably older than me. And if you happen to have a pencil ready, I'd like to give you his website because it's not worth my telling you about the Khan Academy. It really is worth five minutes of your time to look at it. The site is www.khanacademy.org. And he goes through every step of math in the universe to teach how to do it. But the beauty of his program is students having any sort of difficulty, thank you, can go to the site, pick up the topic in math that they're doing right now. Their parents can get it for them if they're younger. And they can review the steps over and over and over and over until they get it. And a few of his um, comments were presented by people in their 40s, 50s, who admitted that as students in elementary and junior high or high school, they didn't get concepts in math. And if later in life, they've gone back to his site, which is free for all of us and for all students. And they reviewed things, and they did that. They listened and read it, read it, read it, until they got it. And they went back to college, and they did fabulous, and they graduated, and they've gone a new direction in their life, and wouldn't it be nice if we could do that for students when they're young and not later in their life? So I really strongly suggest you check out the Khan Academy. That's a really happy note. This is a really happy note. I do want to mention that the School Board Association also put out information in its January newsletter that with the with the trigger and the transportation cuts and all of that, that the expectation is losing about $55 per ADA. And if you multiply that by the number of students in a classroom, or the number of classroom students in a school, or the number of students in our district, we're talking real money. It's okay, we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna do great, but you need to, you know, if parents talk to you and they say, what's going on, how are schools being hit by the current budget, this estimate is $55 per ADA, and it's a number you might want to have until Ms. Humes gives us a different number. That's including everything, right? Including everything. So maybe the biggest picture. And um, that is the end of my report. Next, I'd like to call up um, represent. Do we have a representative from PTA here this evening? No, she could not come today. Thank you. Do we have a rep representative from that PTA? I'm here. Okay, Ms. Turner, would you like to say something? With Thank you for the magazine. Oh, you're welcome.
Good evening to everybody and welcome to the Chinese New Year of the Dragon. Yes. <laughs> so far, 2012 has been moving along with fairly positive information regarding the improving state of California's employment, housing, and budgetary situation. Admittedly, the progress is at a snail's pace, but even though it is minuscule, it is forward and in a positive direction. California has had so many years of deficits and difficulty that any improvement gives us an opportunity for hope. Last month, several schools within our district were acknowledged for excellence, according to the Register newspaper, and this month I particularly wanted to pay a compliment to Richmond School for their Golden Bell Award that they, they received for a program that they've been implementing in conjunction with their physical education program and St. Jude's Neighborhood Health Clinic. This program called Strong Minds, Strong Bodies, Strong Futures combats obesity. Our students need to experience not only academic excellence, but also they need to have those in a healthy body. Our curriculum needs to be holistic in its approach, and if it is, our students benefit many times over. Governor Brown has been faced with making many difficult decisions regarding the California state budget. He has said that cuts need to be made to education, health and welfare, and programs that impact senior citizens. It seems a shame to pick on groups who are already most vulnerable. To put this in a perspective, however, the 9.2 billion deficit is a terrific improvement over last year's $26 billion gap. The automatic cut of nearly $5 billion is the equivalent of about three weeks of school. I don't actually expect those weeks will actually be removed from the calendar, but it is a frightening analogy to consider. I have not carefully researched the statistics yet, but if a lot of time is eliminated from the school year, how does that possibly carry over into the work of the police department with increases in crime and mischief sorts of activities? A recent news broadcast at this point, it's a couple weeks old, stated that due to cost-saving considerations, the last three large state juvenile facilities will likely be closed. This will displace about 11,000 young people. It is times like these that cause school districts and educators to try to implement programs that provide constructive activities for students. We need to be thinking of ways that unstructured time can be constructively used to remediate or perhaps advance. 2012 has barely begun. Questions are considerable. Concerns are tremendous. Answers are in short supply. However, in Fullerton, if we continue to work together, our students will continue to flourish and our schools will continue to excel. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. I wondered if there's someone going to speak for CSEA this evening? Or AXA? Desma, sorry. Good evening, distinguished board and President Sugarman and distinguished family members and Dr. Hubby. I am here to say Happy New Year to you too. It does seem like it's come very quickly. We've been really busy already and I would like to say that as we speak, Robert Johnson has the applications that are going forward for all the nominations. He'll be taking those for administration awards to um, the AXA region tomorrow. And I would really like to say thank you so much for all of you who put the time and the effort into writing those awards. I know they're time consuming. I've done many of them myself. And I really think we do have a lot of people that I really would like to say deserve those awards like you say. And I would like to thank Carmen for putting that last package together. 
Thank you very much. Um, I would also like to just bring up the fact that there is going to be a joint dinner coming. And that joint dinner, uh, Bob Wells is going to speak about the state of public education in California. The speakers are always excellent, and he's um, a really um, knowledgeable speaker. So we hope a lot of you will join us. We've been collecting those names already, and we're giving those to Carmen so that we can all sit together. It's $31 for your ticket. And if you're going to go, you can email me, and I'll forward it to Carmen. They would like for us to please make our reservations by the 25th so they can plan dinner for us. And there is also the date is, a, what date is? Oh, the date is February 1st. Thank you. Sorry. And there's also a co-administrator co um, workshop prior to that for aspiring principals. And many of us are planning on attending that, so if you'd like to go. Here are some flyers for you, and we hope to see you there. Thank you. Information items now on our calendar. I had a little trouble opening that up today. Has any, does anyone else have any problems opening up that website? What website? Or the calendar? No? Okay. Must have been. I've been bored. We have minutes from our last board meeting, which was December 13th. I move to accept the minutes of the meeting on December 15th. Second. Thank you. Is there uh, any discussion? Thank you for doing another excellent job. I'd like to hear all those in favor. Aye. 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 Those were opposed. God bless you. Thank you. Next, we have our consent calendar. No, it's okay. Do you have the calendar? Yeah. I'm getting everything on. You're getting everything? It was just what was going on in my house. Yes. Yes, I'm right. Does anyone uh, have anything they'd like to pull or discuss on the consent calendar? I have brief questions on the number of them. Why don't you give me your numbers? 1C. Well, if when we're doing any kind of project, we get 
at least verbal bids, you know, if it's below the legal sure. requirement. And so, um, yes, Larry, Laura, our director of MNO, will get different bids, and yeah, a lot of times we use them because they are the lowest price. So yeah, you do see them on there a lot for projects that are not so big that we have to bid them, but bigger than our guys can do. Okay. Um, we built, we put a drinking fountain, it looks like, it, um, I don't know what school it is, it doesn't, it doesn't say, it's a, it was $2,486, is that one drinking fountain? $2,486. Um, probably so, if we had to plumb it and you know, And then uh, the, air, the air filter replacement, $8,300. Is that, is that every air conditioning filter in the whole district? That is the supply. That is correct. How often do you hear it? That, I'm going to have to check. Yeah. 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 Have a work day, yeah. and perhaps that's yeah. something we might think about. Doing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But by the way, I want to point out, you know, as I'm reading through this, I, one of the reasons I don't send these as questions is because if I type these as written questions, you guys will spend hours, and I'm going to look through these in about three minutes. So, um, what are I don't understand the floors and uh, excellence in floors and educational foundation, all the for the kids, 12,000 three times in a row. What what do we, is that, what is that for? Mary Virginia. F2. Oh, those are the, the Mary Virginia, yeah. Oh, the that's, the, that's the endowment that we received with those dollars. $12,000. What? Given. Why is that in a purchase order? Because the money came into the school district. Yes. Oh, and then we paid it out. Then so then paid out to the gotcha, three gotcha, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Um, a friend. It's a total of five years. This is the second year, so three more years. You're probably not going to know the answer to this question. A friend of mine demanded that I ask this, and Beth will guess exactly who it is. But we put up a couple of few new ball walls. Yes. And he was concerned how deep the footing was. And obviously, those things have deep footage. They're deep and they also have to go through, if I'm not mistaken, the Department they, they of State or PSA, 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 PSA Of course. I, mean, yeah. I am curious though, why one was, the one at um, Acacia was 15 grand and, and the ones at Fern and Golden Hill were 26 and a half. It's bigger? Yeah, I think Acacia is just one and then I think the other is yeah. Right. Um, what is Club Z? Is one of our supplemental tutors. Okay. All right. And um, what is that? What is the consultant? Well, obviously, it's the, so. So it's a, a consultant that teaches our teachers some consulting on that, that academic instruction, academic goals. Team. It's a consultant that instructs our teachers. The question is, what is academic goals Inc. do? F22 XO 363. Title one object description says so title one district instruction yeah. slash consultants. Just the category is under. Yeah, yeah. that's the object code where it says consultants is where it's being charged. I have to look that up specifically. Okay. In, Fair enough. It's an SES provider. It's one of the same yeah. thing like at Club Z is. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Appreciate it. Could it be? Okay, I, that's all I have on the Anyone else have anything that you want to say? Okay, let's move on to 1H. Jenny, you want to start it out? Since you're well, I'm just thinking that. this district and the principals need to be committed because this is so big to Williams. If, if you're out of compliance with this, it's, it's not a good thing for the district. And kudos to everybody making sure that it has the right equipment and the right classroom and the numbers. So I, I was pleased to see that on the uh, consent item. Especially that's our responsibility. Yes. Thank you. Yes, it's, board, it's our individual I'm very many things that we have to do. Um, Chris? You know, I, I, I didn't Google it. I was, can somebody explain to me what Williams litigation is? I know we've discussed this before, but I'm not remembering. Mm -hmm. 
Massive Susan, you want to explain or Mark? Mark, you, you deal with that, but that's the distribution. That came so as a lawsuit with LA Unified initially, um, dealing with some of the um, schools <coughs> who were not being financed with proper textbooks. Um, they didn't have some of the facilities as far as restrooms, etc. And um, in a mitigation sort of agreement, they decided they would have this come forward so that all schools would be checked on an annual basis. We do a court based county does it, coordinates it with us, and it's quarterly reviews. Yeah, um, they can drop in any time. That's correct. But they also, it's dealing with, as you can see, facilities issues, instructional material issues, whether the child has a textbook assigned to them, etc. Credential issues if the teacher's teaching in proper placement and then other. And some of the other is whether the principals received any kind of uh, complaints to them in writing. And so when Jenny said, you know, it's good to see that the work that goes into this, everybody puts a lot of effort in this so that, for example, principals are resolving the issues at the school sites, curriculum department, make sure that there's textbooks on the tables, etc. No leaky water fountains. But it's, they, it, I hate to use the term yeah. nitpick, but they look at <laughs> whether the fountain has enough pressure on it, whether the restrooms are clean, and I mean, those top to bottom. But it's about fairness across schools and across equity. children. That's equity. equity. That's correct. And it, it legally, it says if, there are, if students don't have textbooks, it is the responsibility of individual board members, and they're not protected by the board of insurance. It is our legal responsibility to know and that's why we bring the report to the court. Right. I think we said that our legal responsibility to buy them. It may be soon. <laughs> no, yeah. I remember one time one of our esteemed board members came into my classroom always wanted to count the books and count the kids. Always. She was quite uh, focused on that. <laughs> one M. It's her responsibility. Yes, it one M. What, what did you just say? One hand. No, one eye. Did I not say eye? That's okay. No. That's okay. One eye. Well, it's already passed, but I still I just brief um, this this uh, contractor agreement um, for for early childhood uh, education consulting services in the organization that we contract with um, Daniela. Are busy um, is, that their their philosophy is similar to the renowned schools in Reggio Emilia, Italy. Yes, that's very famous. Clearly, but I don't know. Okay. Is it possible? And if it's not, is it possible? Give me a fifteen or twenty second. What what is so special about that? Google. Huh? Google. I I, 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 I I cannot. I'm Mary Lee, who is not in town tonight, would otherwise. I'm glad they have for you the information, but. It's, it's all dealing with the um, uh, constructive building of education and learning through activities and those sorts of things, if I remember correctly. Right. And it's experiential. That's right. And it's not uh, teacher in the front of the room. It's children learning through play and experience. Yeah, it's very um, open education. Very hands on. Uh, oh, and, and, um, and I just, it, it looks like uh, the county, we achieved a lower water rate for construction projects. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. yeah that was, Thank you. That was good. Okay. Thank just, you. I want to make sure I understood oh. that was the main. We don't read that kind of thing very often. Um, I, I, uh, was it by your choice? Well, no, yeah. it's, about, yeah. it's about the uh, antenna on top of. Oh yeah, I was curious. How did this? Uh, how did that come about? That, that who would determine that? So we had a consultant that said this would be the best place. Right. To go. What we, best public building? What we've been working for for the last four years is to have a means of being able to communicate with all our schools. Right. And so we had studies conducted throughout all of Fullerton, and we determined that that was the best place in order for us to be able to put our repeater stations so right. we get to all of our schools. So we just approached them. Right. And they said no problem. Well, yeah. <laughs> I wish it would have been that easy, but it's taken us several years. Oh, really? The end result is, yeah, it's no problem. But we thank North Orange County College Districts for being a friend and a community yes. partner. They partnered with us to make it happen. Okay. The next thing is Jenny, one Q. 
but that was me. Oh, I'm sorry. I just like yeah. you, and, and um, I figured you didn't answer this one off the top of your head. This was for the LA plan because uh, we're in year two. Right. Okay, so I'm assuming that we've had to do this year, each year, come up with a different plan or come up with a plan because of the requirement, or is this the first year we had to do this specific plan? No, we have to address and make corrective actions, right. and specifically, this was to address that that one area, CMA 03, that we were not able to reach the, the standard on. How is this plan different than last year's plan? Is it way different or is it about the same? No. It's generally the same and the modifications that were made were listed on the <coughs> right. summary that specifies mainly in the area for English learners to help support their, we needed to say uh, what we were going to do specifically to help our English learners to achieve and EL Achieve is those materials for our English language development program. Dutro, Susanna Dutro. So that that's different. I just wanted to make sure we weren't doing the same thing every year and not, that there was some some differentiation between last year's plan and this year's plan. That we have different well, things. Now. Well, we are, we are doing the same and we're doing more of it because we need to continue our training so that it is district wide and need to continue training our new teachers and um, make sure we're all applying those techniques. And, and like technology, if I may add on, from what I know, the Jutro's kits are very expensive. So we bought, we bought some in the past, and now we are increasing that number so that we can spread out the use of them to more students needing them. And we want to provide systematic training. Okay. And it's best practice, I believe. Right? It is. And it's important to continue working with it. Oh, right. And improving right. with it because if you just keep changing programs, it's not just the program that makes the changes. Right. right. But you also don't want to do something the same way every year just because you've done it that way and it's not getting you anywhere. Then well, if it's not I know working. we're not doing that. So if it's, it's not working, then you're right. Really but you are yeah. showing growth to those programs. One line. Um, very small, well, relatively small amount of money, about eleven hundred and fifty dollars maximum. But um, I was curious that we would have a contract not to exceed eleven hundred and fifty dollars when uh, a per evaluation max was eight fifty and an hourly rate was one hundred and forty five. Well, what exactly is this? The rates are that high, yet the total amount of the contract is so small. If anybody knows. Right. I, um, I have to ask Laura what the specifics are on that. This is um, a specialized assessment for one student as part of a settlement agreement. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, out. Right. And a very reputable person to do it. Correct, Laura? Sure. So we, you probably can't tell us much more about that, huh? Right. <laughs> um, And your last yeah, question yeah. was on 1C. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, I'm all passing. Okay. Now let's have a vote. Are there further questions? I'd like to uh, vote. All those in favor of accepting the consent as, as presented? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, now we'd like to go down to. Um, board policy discussion. discussion board policy 3553. This is the second reading.
can be admitted to regular kindergarten on a case-by-case -case basis. In addition, um, the <coughs> Pepe K or transitional kindergarten will be offered to any student who is age eligible. And the, another nice thing is that this um, transitional kindergarten program will bring ADA funding into the school district. Yeah. Yeah. And if yeah, it's it not funded, funded, we can ask people to pay. I don't think so. And there is a lot of district flexibility in terms of creation and adoption of curriculum and standards for those students. And then finally, instructional minutes are the same as for our regular kindergarten students, um, set at 36,000 minutes per year. And it's my pleasure to introduce Susan Mercado now to tell you more. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to talk to you about some of the benefits of a two-year program. First of all, um, as Janet mentioned, this program will be phased in this fall, fall of 2012, and it's a two-year kinder experience providing a bridge between preschool and traditional kindergarten. The tra uh, transitional program gives the gift of time to help uh, help the students really to develop in their social, emotional, and academic skills needed to succeed in kinder. And the TK program will also open up many possibilities for enriching and exploratory opportunities with the visual and performing arts, which we're very excited about. Now there's a lot of research around this program, and the research shows that children who attend kindergarten readiness programs like transitional kindergarten, are more likely to do well in school and attend college. Another point of research, children will, do better, will be better prepared to succeed in kindergarten and beyond. Parents will now have an additional option to ensure their children enter kindergarten with the maturity and skills they need to excel. Schools will benefit because children will be better prepared for success in school and less likely to be placed in special education or retained in later grades. And as uh, alluded to earlier, California's economy will be strengthened by a well-educated, globally competitive workforce. And that is, of course, if it is funded by the state. And now I'd like to introduce Denise Segundo, who is a kindergarten teacher from Valencia Park. <laughs> 